Good morning. Let's all stand at this time and begin our Sunday morning time of worshiping the Lord in song, all right? to sing sing Christmas songs. I kind of wish we did that all year round. I was listening to uh, uh, some people talking and uh, Mark Lowry, after he wrote the song, Mary, Did You Know? Uh, he was visiting a church in July and uh, he sang, Mary, Did You Know? in July. 
Uh, great song, isn't it? Great song. I hope we'll be hearing that in the days ahead. Well, let's go to the Lord in prayer. I'm so glad you're here. Y'all look good. You look smiley. Uh, how many of you got all your Christmas shopping done? You're done. You're through with it. One guy said, I never start. <laughs> yeah, then I don't have to finish. But uh, yeah, they're saying now that the lines aren't going to be long at Walmart. They're going to, your, your downtime on the computer is going to be long, getting into Amazon and all that e-purchasing that we're going to be doing. Oh, y'all look, you know what? We're going to talk about a gift today. and You already know what gift that is, but we're so enamored with gifts, but I'm so glad that God has given us the gift. Amen. Can I have an amen? Amen. All right. Father God, thank you so much for this beautiful day. Sun is shining. Breeze is nice. Father, but we've taken the time not to be um, on a golf course or on a lake or at a park, but we've taken the time to come and to worship you because you have taken us through so much this week. You've taken us through the waters and the rivers and the fires of life. And so that causes us to want to worship you, to come and sing praises unto you and to thank you for your blessings. And certainly, Lord, we thank you in the time of this year, but every when we have salvation. And so, Father, bless our service today, we pray. And all God's people said, amen.
Ha, ha, ha. Oh, choir, that was beautiful. If you weren't in the Christmas spirit when you walked in the doors this morning, <laughs> you ought to be in the Christmas spirit now. That's the most wonderful time. Not only is it the most wonderful time of the year, but it's also the most busiest time of the year. And uh, we can all say amen to that. Oh, wow. Hey, tonight, we'd love to have you uh, come with us to Tabernacle Baptist Church. And uh, how many of y'all know where that church is? Raise your hand. Okay. All the folks in MIMS know where that church is. If you know where the post office is in MIMS, how many of y'all know where that's at? The post office? Perfect. You know where the church is then. Go like you're going to the post office. Turn left there on US 1 as you're heading north. Turn left on US 1 by the post office right there like you're going to the post office and just go straight. And you're going to go about four or 500 yards and the church is on your left. Tabernacle Baptist Church, Sam Wilson and not Nadia, uh, his wife, and uh, he pastors the church there. He also is a teacher here. We have, uh, we have pastors in our community in North Brevard that also teach and work at our church, and we're thankful to God for that as well. And so come out tonight. It's at 6 o'clock. Get early. Get there early at 6 o'clock. Some of our teenagers, Matt is one of them. Matt's going to be, who, who, what character are you tonight? You're always a character, but tonight, Joseph or the wise guy? Well, you're always the wise guy, but Joseph, uh, that'll work out. So uh, that's going to be fun. And just encourage this little church. That'll be a, a great thing to encourage them as well. And uh, it's just a, the old-fashioned uh, Christmas play. And, uh, and then um, we have uh, on uh, the 20th, that's, uh, that's tonight, and then next Sunday morning, uh, we'll be in here, and our choir has been rehearsing and rehearsing and rehearsing for weeks now uh, on this wonderful Come, Let Us Adore. And it's a beautiful, beautiful um, arrangement. You'll enjoy it, and we have some drama in it as well between the songs. So invite your friends. Invite all the priesters you know, the people that only come to church at Christmas time and at Easter. Invite them, please, to come and be a part of that. And then on Christmas Eve... Uh, or actually next week, 20th, here morning, 11 o'clock, 10 o'clock Sunday Bible study, then 11 o'clock service, the choir. Then that night, we're having our monthly fellowship, and we've got the Allen family that's going to be with us next Sunday evening, 6 o'clock here, and want you to come out for that as well. It's a wonderful family. They have eight children, uh, six children and mom and dad, so eight all together. We've had them here several times. You'll enjoy them. They'll minister to your heart. They'll, you'll see the young, uh, the kids, and it's just something about it, uh, seeing children and uh, singing, and it's going to be a great time, festive time. And then, of course, the most festive time we have is on Christmas Eve, and uh, we're inviting folks to come out for that and be advertising and, and whatnot. So we need you to help as well. Let's have a full house with that, having everybody come out and, um, and invite your, again, the priesters as well. We'll have the candles on the wall, but even uh, it'll just look so pretty in here. And we have nice candle cakes, we call them, and we'll sing happy birthday to Jesus. And, and the choir is going to be singing again that night. So you'll get a taste of it. You'll hear it all on the 20th, and then you'll say, man, I got my neighbors need to see this. How many of you have neighbors? Raise your hand. You got neighbors? Okay, all right, good. You're not isolated on an island anywhere? Invite them to come out. Just invite them. You might be surprised. They may show up, okay? If you're visiting with us for the first time, either live here today or online at templebc.net, we're so glad you're with us today. You've uh, tuned in to watch us, and uh, thank you very, very much. We welcome you as well. If you're here visiting with us today for the very first time, uh, and you've not got a card yet, uh, would you just raise your hand? Our usher's going to come to you and give you a card. Any first-time visitors at all? Anybody at all? Okay. We're, we've changed up our methodology on how we're handling our visitors. Since there's no visitors today, I can tell you, we're going to snag them as they run out the front door, okay? Used to have them come down front, but I can't get anybody to bring them down here so that I'm going to catch them before they get out the door. And so that's, that's the method there, what we're going to do. Hey, God bless you all. Yes? And Margaret, yes, yes, my mother-in-law is here. And I, I almost Amen. went to purgatory over that one right there. I did. But yes, Becky's, Becky's, uh, Becky's dear mother, Margaret, is with us for a month. And uh, we're, we're looking so forward. We've had a good time already. She arrived on Friday and, on a plane. And uh, we just figured that two hours on a plane is better than two days in a car and a hotel and all that stuff. So... Uh, she sat out on the right wing of the plane just so she'd be safe. She's social distance out there. 
And, uh, but Margaret, we love you and we're glad that you're with us. The grandkids are glad you're with us as well, very much so. All right, well, let's pray. Father, again, we thank you. Thank you for what you're doing in and among us. And Father, bless our time together today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Let's worship the Lord in song once again as we stand and sing about Emmanuel, the God who is with us. All right.
Thank you, choir. That's what we've come to do, to come and adore Him. Adore. Love. Honor. Admire. What does God mean to you? That's what we've come to do today. We've also come to worship Him in our giving. To worship Him in our giving. And albeit it's a little different way that we do that because of uh, different things. We put it in the offering boxes in the back, our tithes and offerings, before church, after church. A lot of you are electronically giving. That's great. And uh, so there's many ways to do that. But it's a form of worship. It's a form of obedience to God. As a member of this church, Ed, I'll have you give your testimony someday on what you gave us the other day on uh, the lessons that we're all still learning. We're all still growing. I want to encourage you also to come to Sunday Bible study. And if you're listening online, you can simply go to our website, templebc.net, and you can log on to a Bible study there on real Christianity. I'd encourage you to do that. Real Christianity. So, Father, we pray now that you'll bless this offering, the tithes and the offerings, Lord, for our missions. Father, you will continue to bless us and meet our needs. We pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Raise, we let all win. 
love it, I love it, I love it. I've always wondered if I'd been at the stable that night. Would I have seen a king or just a baby? If I'd stood there with the shepherds listening to stories about choirs of angels, would I have asked, what child is this? Or would I have known that he someday would be the shepherd of all? If I'd watched wise men bring valuable gifts and kneel down under the guard of heavenly wonders, would I have understood that he was the one in whom I'd find all wisdom? And that he was the greatest gift of all. Just as that baby was held by his mother. He would hold me. He would hold me with his amazing grace. And his adoption by his father Joseph would be a picture of my adoption into God's family. Who could comprehend that this baby who was defenseless, swaddled, and held would someday be the one holding me in his hands? I didn't witness a star moving across the sky. Or scores of angels proclaiming his birth. But somehow, in the middle of my ordinary world, this extraordinary baby's birth found a place in my worn down, beat up heart. So like all those people who saw him. He's the one I've been waiting for. To repair me. Redeem me. Love me. Forgive me. Comfort me. Help me. Die for me. Raise me to life. So what child is this? He's the one who comes to save me. He's the one who comes to save me. To save me. To save me. He's the one who comes to save me. No finer gift have we been given than the gift of Jesus Christ. That ought to make a Baptist shout. What a precious gift. And all those things that come with it. Again, I want to encourage you to come to Sunday Bible study. We're, uh, we're studying what it really means to be a Christian. And it's not, let me just, let me just help some of you. It, it is not, you're not defined by what you do. You're not defined by what you do. You're defined through God being born into His family. You're a child of God. You've accepted the most precious gift that God has ever given to us. The shed blood of Jesus Christ. And that is a most precious, precious gift. Isaiah chapter 9, if you'll turn there, Isaiah chapter 9. I hope that this year will be a wonderful, wonderful Christmas for you in Christ. Not necessarily because of the gifts that you receive, but because of the gift that you have received. And it's our hope that if you're here today without never, never, never asking Jesus Christ to come into your life and to say, realizing that you're a sinner, we would hope today would be the day of salvation, the day that you would receive that gift. You don't have to wait till the 25th of December. You can accept Christ today before it's eternally too late. Isaiah chapter 9. We'll get there in a moment. I want you to be there. So the gift of Christmas uh, is powerful. It's personal. It's life-changing. How many would say, after I received Christ, it changed my life? Can I see your hand? I see it all over the house. Christ is the life changer. He's the chain breaker, as the song says. For centuries now, receiving and giving gifts have become synonymous with Christmas. How is it at your house when you all open gifts? Is it one at a time? Or is it all for one and one for all? Remember those days? You know, mom and dad get to bed. They got everything put together. The bikes are made. The choo-choo trains all around the tree. And it's 3 a.m. They finally go to bed. And you're down there at 4.30 a.m. You know? Oh, man. We were so happy when our kids got old enough. Everybody wanted to sleep in. That was nice. Remember those days? Some of you are going through those days right now. You're going through that. How precious that is. But let mom and dad sleep a little bit, okay? You don't, you don't shake them out too early. How many of you have ever, be honest, you're in church, how many of you have ever gotten a present from out from under the tree and, oh, I didn't even finish the sentence, and Dawn's hand went straight up. 
How many of you peeked at a present to see what it was? Raise your hand. Confession is good for the soul. All right. Okay, go and sin no more. All right. Kids tear open gifts without any hesitation. You never see a kid say, oh, no, you shouldn't have. <laughs> they never say that. They're like, oh, right. <laughs> just what I wanted. Have you ever seen the expression on the face of a kid that, I got a Babe Ruth candy bar one year. That's my gift. My dad wrapped up a Baby Ruth candy bar on top of a brick, wrapped in foil, and then wrapped in Christmas gift. And I opened it up. It was a Baby Ruth candy bar. Now, I like Baby Ruth candy bars, but that's, that's all I thought I was going to get. It was a big joke. You know, it's a dad thing, all right? Ha, ha. And yet the greatest gift of Christmas seems to catch everyone off guard. It certainly caught Mary off guard, did it not? Hello, angel, the messengers of God come to her. You conceived, you're going to have a bad, well, hello, what? Imagine Mary, it all caught her off guard in the best way. The gift of baby Jesus transcends all expectations. One of my last verses found in Psalms 62, verse 5, my soul, wait, only, wait thou only upon God, for my expectation is from Him. Have you ever expected God to do something? Have you ever expected God to do a miracle, perhaps, in your life? Have you ever ex expected God to, for wisdom? What are you expecting God? My soul, wait thou only upon God. Only upon God. Doesn't say wait upon God and the politicians. Hallelujah for that. Only upon God, for our, my expectation is from God. There'll be times in your life that God will move you far beyond your expectations. God says He'll give us exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ever ask or think. God says He will... He, he will Give us abundantly. That means overflowing. That means full measure. We have in Florida these artesian wells. And, and don't you love it when you go to a restaurant and you order something? And uh, let me just, let me say this. Don't you just hate it when you order something and you pay good money for it and they bring out a piece of salmon that is a little bit bigger than a quarter? <laughs> they think that's elegant and trendy. Uh, not in my world. No. Uh uh. Bring the rest of the fish out here, would you? All right. Don't you love it when, when you get more than you expected of a good thing? Sure. We, there's a famous uh, barbecue place in, in our family's life in Arkansas. It's called the Polar Freeze. He started out selling ice cream, but then he started selling barbecue. And Jack Allison really knew how to do barbecue. He taught me how to do barbecue. And oh man, is it so good. And when he, anybody, everybody loves Jack Allison because he served it on a regular size bun, but put enough meat on it for a jumbo bun. It was off the plate. You, you needed a fork or it was finger licking good. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's the way. That's what God wants to do with us, to give us exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think in this, in this, in this, this most precious gift. Many times in Becky's and my life, we have seen this happen many times. Most gifts are wonderful and welcome, but once in a while, someone is able to open the gift and smile and say, not what I expected, but just what I wanted. You gotten a gift like that? I, I didn't expect it, but how did you know this is what I wanted? Aren't those the most precious gifts? The gifts that you really wanted, but you never shared it with anybody. But, but they got it. They found out somehow. Oh, those are the most precious gifts. The most precious gifts. Our God knows just what we're in need of. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. That want means to be in need of. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in need of. The Bible says He'll not cause the righteous to beg. This unexpected gift is most precious. I don't know what you might be getting for Christmas this year, but nothing will be compared to what God has given us through His only begotten Son. So now, with your Bibles, let us stand.
And let us read Isaiah chapter 9. We'll read chapter, we'll read verse 2, and then we'll jump down of chapter 9, then we'll jump down to verse 6. And it says, The people that walked in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them hath that light shine. And all God's people said, Amen. For unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulders. And His name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Of the increase of His government and peace, there shall be no end. Oh, I can't wait till that day. Upon the throne of David and upon His kingdom to order it, to establish it with judgment and with justice from henceforth even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will be performed this. Father, may You bless Your reading of Your Word today. And as we look at this and we make application to our lives in December of 2020, Father, may we leave here being encouraged of the most precious gift You've ever given to mankind in Your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. So God's gift is more personal than ever imagined. Personal. Well, that's a personal thing. Uh, you know, I ask people all the time, I say, are you religious? Well, that's a personal thing. Can we talk about church? That's a personal thing. And we kind of, Listen, <laughs> aren't you glad that uh, the shepherds heard the news and they went and told? Aren't you glad the wise men heard and deliberately went to where the, the child now two or three years of age was at? They didn't hide it. It wasn't a personal thing. It is personal in the fact that you personally accepted Christ as your Savior, but hey, it is not to be kept a secret. It is to get it out. We all want personal gifts, ones that show they really involve the giver. I mean, there, there's, don't tell me, don't you like the gift that somebody made for you, then they went out to Wally World and bought for you? Isn't it most precious? We, we have this pen and prayer ministry that we started up when COVID first hit. We saw a need immediately, and the need was we needed to connect with people. We need to let people know that are shut in, that are, that are staying at home. You remember when it first came out? I mean, it was like, everybody stay home. How many of y'all remember that? I remember that? And man, God bless them in California. They're getting that all over again. Stay at home. So we started, the ladies started making cards, making them, buying stock paper and, and learning how to paint and glue and lick it and stick it and all this kind of stuff. And, and, and then they, we sent them, over a thousand of these cards were distributed in the time that this ministry lasted. It lasted for several months. But we used that to contact the people. But people said, huh, that was better than any Hallmark card I ever got. I, I, I even have some at my office. That was sent to me, and I just, man, because I know, I've seen Becky stay up late at night, cutting everything out, getting ready for the class, and I know what, what went. Aren't you glad when somebody gives you something that, that they personally made? Verse 6 that we just read says, Unto us a child is born, a son is giving. You see, it's the gift, but it's also the one the gift giver that gave the gift, God Almighty. For God so loved the world, the Bible says. Here's one of many birth announcements. This is just one. This here in, in, uh, in, in Isaiah, uh, that's one of about a hundred verses in the Bible that is announcing, prophesying the birth of Jesus Christ. Many had known this, but they missed it. Why did they miss it? Because they looked at the upcoming of Jesus Christ, the birth of Jesus Christ, as looking at some faraway mountain peaks. Oh, that's to come. That's so far away. And then when He did come, He came in a most humble way, did He not? He came in the stench of a manger. And we are so glad that He's come into the stench of our hearts. Aren't you? I know I am. But in a humble way, they're looking for a king to deliver them from the Roman oppression. But Jesus came to be their Savior, 
to die, as we say he was born to die. No one expected God to be vulnerable, yet that is just what God did. God coming to humanity, coming as a child, not only the most precious gift, but secondly, the great gift of Christmas is more powerful than ever imagined. We all long at this time of year to know that the world could have, have a bright future, but we're seeing that light grow dim, are we not? <clears throat> so we discover that God has sent a figure to change human history. Look at verse 6 again. <clears throat> the government will rest upon <clears throat> His shoulders. He's the prince of what? Peace. This world is crying out for peace. Many are expecting a great king from God. God brought in Jesus Christ wrapped in swaddling clothes. The great need of humanity. Oh, pastor, what is the great need of humanity? What is it that humanity really needs? The great gift of humanity is not solved by who's ruling over the people Get that. The great need of humanity is what's ruling <coughs> within people. Is it Satan or is it Christ? And I'm afraid we have a lot of people that are being ruled, that are unregenerated, lost, <coughs> and are being driven and ruled by Satan himself. Never before have we seen the world that we're in like we're seeing it. But I want to tell you, there's hope. We need to be loving our neighbors as we love ourselves. We don't need earthly person ruling over us. We need the ruling of the Holy Spirit within us. And we need to be obedient to the, to the Holy Spirit. We Christians better flee from our sin and humbly pray to God to heal our land. We all know 2 Chronicles 7.14. Listen, God came. God came to defeat far more than a particular government. He came to defeat the power of evil itself. There's coming a day. Brother Bill reminded me this a couple of years ago. There's coming a day that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess. <clears throat> you mean every, everybody. Everybody. Everybody is going to come to that place and they're going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. There are Christians that are being beheaded almost on a daily basis. Did you know, I think it's up in, um, in Canada. Is that where the guillotines are being purchased? A lot of guillotines in Canada. They're purchasing a lot. Guillotine manufacturers are having their heyday right now. Wonder why heads are going to roll. And they're going to say either you, you proclaim another God and you disclaim Jesus Christ. Satan is using rebellion and lies. Satan is the author of confusion. He's the father of lies. The Bible says that confusion is as of the sin craft of what? The sin of what? <laughs> Witchcraft. Witchcraft. And boy, is there an uptick on that. An uptick on that. W-O-K-E. Look it up. Jesus Christ was born to restore. Don't look it up now. Get off that phone. Don't look it up now. You can talk to Uncle Google later. All right. Jesus Christ was born to restore the reign of God in human hearts. I'm so glad of that. Christ. Through Christ, we see lives transformed. <coughs> we see families restored. Oh, I, I love seeing that. To see families restored. To be back together. Nations have changed forever <coughs> through Christ. <coughs> this one Christ child has dealt more blows to evil than you, we can imagine. In Jesus, the power of peace we long for God is in control, dear church. Many years ago, Tara's here with us, <coughs> our oldest child. Her brother, Shad, 
Tara was probably about, I don't know, three years old, four or five years old. Shad a couple years younger. Becky was gone. I was working on a very, very, very important project. I'd gotten a new barbecue grill and I needed to put it together. <laughs> Extremely important. Well, if you don't eat, you die, okay? So this is, this, is, this is a matter of life or death for my family to provide, to cook for my family. Right, Randy? You agree to that, Randy? All right, good deal. Amen. So I needed to put this thing together. I didn't want to, I was cheap, didn't want to pay $25 for Lowe's to put it together. I could put it, rah, 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 rah. I put it together myself. I can do it. Invest the money, please. <laughs> oh my goodness. So I needed Shad and, uh, Shad and, and Tara to just to be, uh, just to work on something together. Now Becky had bought a big, one of those, what do they call them, um, 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 tables, uh, living room table. What do you Thank you. Coffee table. Books. You know, they're like this. You know, they're big books. And she got it for a dollar at some rummage sale or, you know, some garage sale somewhere. So we didn't pay a lot of money for it. But it was on uh, maps and the history of, of uh, the Bible land and Israel and all of that stuff. So I thought, you know what, it only cost a dollar. But I saw a map in there. And so I just tore out that page like this. And I got some scissors and I cut it up into puzzle pieces. And, and, I, and I spread it all out on the coffee table. And I said, you kids put this puzzle together. Dad's got something very important to do. So don't disturb me. Figuring this will at least take an hour. I could probably have that thing done in an hour. <laughs> right. So I go outside. Within 15 minutes, they come back. And I told them, take scotch tape, because kids love stickers. Take scotch tape. When you put it together... Then take Scott's tape so it's all one piece again. You following what I'm saying? You got this, Zach? You with me? All right. And so they did it in 15 minutes. They said, Dad, Dad, we got it. I said, you got to be kidding me. So I go in the house, and sure enough, <clears throat> they were so proud, they had that puzzle together. I said, how did you do it so fast? I mean, it was a map of, uh, of, uh, of, of uh, the Holy Land. It was, you know, how are you going to put this? That would take them forever. They said that we, we were putting together, and we looked on the back, and there was a nose. And we found an eye. <coughs> and we found a mouth and an ear and another ear. <coughs> and Daddy, we, it was easier to put that face together because we knew where the parts went. And so they put the face together, and it was an artist's rendition of Jesus Christ. And I got to thinking about that. I got to think when our life is so in, 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 in turmoil and upside down with whatever's going on in your life, that if we stay focused on the face of Jesus, all that's cut up and spread out and we don't know how to put it back together again. Sound like Humpty Dumpty, doesn't it? Right there. God knows how to put it back together. We stay focused on, the, on Jesus Christ. That's a most precious gift. That's the kind of gift that we have been given in Christ. If we would only look on the other side of the map of life, and then Mary had the king in her hands, as we said, but also great gifts. The great gift of Christmas is more permanent than ever imagined. Amen to that. I'm glad that the gift of Christmas is permanent. We all want gifts that last. Let me ask you a question. Can you imagine, what's the... What is the, name me three gifts you got last year for Christmas. I'll do it a little easier for you, ha ha. Go back five years, tell me what you got for Christmas. Unless your name is Sean Muir, you don't know. Only you that know Sean Muir would know that. Look at verse 7 in your text. Of his government there will be, <coughs> what does it say? No end. How many of you wish the government of the United States would just, yeah. It's going to someday. It's going to end. See, the government is filled with imperfect people. How many of you are looking for a perfect church? There ain't, there ain't one, because it's filled with imperfect people. And it's, and it, but listen, God says that his government, there will be no end. Many gifts may last, may not last, but God is after our future. That's what God has given to you and me in his gift. A life with a future. Aren't you glad of that? 
we don't die like a dog and that's it. When we die, there, there, there is eternity in heaven for us. What a most precious gift. And finally, the great gift of Christmas is more passionate than ever imagined. The passion of this gift. When it comes to gifts, we've all known that it is the heart of the giver. Listen to me. It's the heart of the giver that matters. Grandmothers are great at this. <coughs> They've learned. They give out of a heart of expectation to see the smile on, that, on our faces. And my grandmother, I'm as big as I am because of my grandmother. My dad's mother. She lived during the Depression. She thought she was still in it. She saved everything. And if she found out we loved Captain Crunch cereal as kids, the next year we would go to, to Moody, Missouri, and she would say, look, and she, satisfaction for her and my dad and for me now is cupboards full. Now, that's not really true. There's nothing to that. But that's just, boy, the cupboards are full. And she would have like eight boxes of Captain Crunch. Now, my Captain Crunch fever didn't last forever. I was into, you know, something else, Rice Krispies or something. So I would say, well, do you have any Rice Krispies? Do you have any Rice Krispies? I thought you liked Captain Crunch. God's gift is perfect. Nobody, none of us are going to go to heaven when we get there. We're there. And you look around, you're going to say, well, good night. I thought this place is going to be better than this. Your criticism will go out the window. It'll be perfect. It'll be, it'll be perfect. The perfect gift. We must consider the one that's giving the gift. <clears throat> More than the gift, it's how much they care that satisfies to the deepest level. Look at verse 7. It says, the zeal of the Lord will accomplish this. This government that God is going to set up on this earth, that He's going to rule and He's going to reign in righteousness and all authority and everything will, <coughs> will be okay because we're being ruled by what's within, not by politics. <clears throat> Stories told about a female missionary. <clears throat> she was on an island, a simple island out in the Pacific somewhere. She received the most precious shell, beautiful shell, and she knew that that shell could only be found on the other side, a few miles, five or six mile walk. To, to the other side of the island to find those beautiful shells. For some reason, they weren't on the other side. Maybe it was the way the wind blew or whatever. And this little boy, this little island boy, brought this shell to the, his missionary, his teacher. And she thanked the little boy. And the little boy, with broken English, said this, <clears throat> Because she said, you've walked so long for this. And the little boy said, the long walk was part of the gift. You get it? I walked so that I could get this gift for you. I sacrificed. And Jesus Christ gave Himself, sacrificed Himself, so that you could receive the gift of eternal life, the gift of forgiveness of sins. How precious. Don't miss the love for you that stands behind this timeless event called Christmas. God has gone to all the links because He's passionate for you. God loves you. You don't understand, Pastor. I've done something that I'm ashamed of. God loves you. And as a child of God... The Bible says if we go to the Lord, if, if we go to Him, and, and He will forgive us of our sins. <clears throat> when was the last time you got out your Bible and read and earnestly spent time praying with God? When was the last time you did that? Let me encourage you to get into the Word of God. 
get into earnest praying. If you're here today, Jesus loves you. God gave us His Son. God commended His love towards us and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. But the wages of sin is death, eternal death in hell. But the gift of God, the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Did you know that we may give a gift to someone without loving them? You can do that. You can give a gift to someone you don't love. That boss, I can't stand that boss, but everybody's giving him a gift, so I'll give him a gift. But you cannot love somebody and not give them a gift. God loves you. He gave us this gift. Himself, incarnate, born in a manger, born to die, was buried. Three days later, He rose again. Aren't you thankful for that? Let's stand to our feet. Father God, we thank You for this most precious gift that You've given to us, and we've seen it as You gave it to Mary, how surprising it was for her, and yet exceeded all expectations. God, You're inexhaustible. Your Word is inexhaustible. God, help us not to hide this most precious gift from those that are dying in their sins without Christ and headed for an eternal hell to burn for all eternity. They will not evaporate. They will not just die and not exist anymore. <clears throat> They'll live forever in a place called hell. So Lord, help us to be ones that would tell them about Jesus. May we go and tell it on the mountaintops. Tell it down the street. Tell it in the workforce. Tell it for where we're at. Share Jesus Christ before it's eternally too late. Father, there's one here today that doesn't know Christ as their Savior. We invite them to come and accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. If you're here today and you don't know Christ as your Savior, you would like to know that you know that you know Christ as your Savior. We would love to come and show you in the Bible how you can be saved. If you're a Christian here today and you've, you've neglected this gift, you've kind of put it on a back shelf, <clears throat> you're living for self instead of for God, may I encourage you to to pray and ask God to forgive you and, and get back in right standing with God in the, in the area of, of, of uh, fellowship, not relationship. He's always going to be your Heavenly Father. But have that sweet fellowship, that peace that only comes from knowing God, closely knowing Him. So whatever your need is today, this is between you and God. Why not take this time to make it right? The invitation is open come just as you are. Jesus, help us. Minister to us. May this Christmas season <clears throat> be most joyful in the fact that we're telling others about Jesus. We know your return is imminent. Could be today. Who do we need to tell? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's all sing this together. As Mark leads us.
leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait, because Jesus is calling me. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes, a new life is born, because Jesus is calling me. Oh, come to Jesus' name, thank you, Lord. And all God, we said, Amen. Amen. Amen.